Hey guys, and welcome back to the 1v1 podcast. I am your host, Vladis, and today I have a very special guest. He is of the YouTube channel Strategic Creation. Can I call you AC or what yeah, should I yeah. call you? Okay. AC, Aiden, Aiden Cash. Uh, yes, yeah, the okay. name I go by. So. Uh, I'm going to call you AC just because that's all right. Um, okay. AC, ladies and gentlemen. So, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is going to be fun. I was looking forward to it. Same. Now, before I get into the actual like meat and potatoes of like getting to know you, your history, um, mm -hmm. I have to, you know, unironically give a shout out to uh, the unofficial sponsor of today's episode, which is uh, Richie SH. Uh, uh, he yeah. basically told me that if I uh, if I don't give him a shout out. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to live out here. So. Yeah, we're trying to live out here. So, you know, if you're, if you're not a fan, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm completely joking. Uh, he did not sponsor this video at all, but <laughs> I just, I'm a huge uh, fan of his. I, I love his mm -hmm. content. I think he's been doing a great job as a content creator for the Ashley yeah. Creation community. Uh, I bought a shirt of his. Uh, actually, I was the very first person who purchased a shirt from Richie. Wow. And, That's uh, what's up. and so I uh, just wanted to give that shout out because hey, it's, it's, it's actually a really nice shirt. I just wish that yeah, this logo was actually higher. Like if I can give Richie mm. any kind of just like a little bit higher, like like you know, it starts like True. right here. True. Uh because it is like more in the center, but yeah, it's not good. It's whatever. Right. Um right. but AC, okay, so here on the One V One podcast, I like to get to know my guests. I like to know, you know, where they've come from in the MMO space or just the gaming okay. space in general. So uh mm -hmm. if you want to start off and just giving us like some of your background and you know how you got into the MMO uh genre all that stuff okay uh yeah so i would i would say that like you know i've seen a few of your podcasts and people are always like i'm i'm like a storied mmo player and like i've got i was <laughs> you know they waged war on mmos and all that stuff right. um, and i would say that like i don't have as much of an mmo history to be honest like okay i would say the very first game that i ever played that was like an mmo uh was probably fantasy star online for the gamecube not exactly an MMO, but it was like the first like really like massively multiplayer online experience that like I right. was into. And then that kind of moved forward, moved itself forward into uh, World of Warcraft. I remember in middle school, my homie was like, yo, there's this game, World of Warcraft. I'm, I've always been a huge like high fantasy nerd. Like I just love all that kind of stuff. So I was like, all right, we out. And so <laughs> we copped uh, World of Warcraft. And um, yeah, that was some of the best like time I've ever spent gaming, honestly. And like. I've just loved MMOs ever since. I also messed around with, you remember that game, like that little free uh, to play MMO back in the day, Fly for Fun? Mm -hmm. Did you ever play that? <laughs> I, I remember hearing about it. I never played it, but I, I yeah, yeah. That was like a little goofy MMO and like you were like <laughs> running around on a broomstick and like, it was cool. Like when I wasn't playing WoW, um, I would play that sometimes. And then most recently, my most recent MMO experience was uh, actually Nino Kuni Cross Worlds, the mobile game. Have you, uh, the mobile game? Have you heard of that? Never heard of it. So yeah, it's like some Studio Ghibli uh, IP, and basically they made like a gotcha MMO. Like I'm not really huge on gotchas. Um, I'd never really played one until that, but it was cool. It was it was actually surprisingly like well developed. It was a mobile game, but they made a PC port, and it ran super well. Like the game was really well optimized. Like you know it could run on anything, and um, it had a lot of really like social elements. Like there was this one thing called the uh the relic wars right and so you and your kingdom which is like your guild you would uh bid this resource that people had to gather in you know various ways you would bid you would donate this resource to the kingdom and then the kingdoms would uh bid on these relics that like gave their kingdom buffs so you could like you know be more powerful or like whatever it is and then um you would fight against other kingdoms for it right and then whoever wins gets the relic so they get the buff inherently and then you would sell the buff to the other members of the server so like you could name your price for it and like it was it was interesting like there was a lot of little right. mechanic that like made it very social and it, it it felt very much like an old school mmo in that way and i was kind of surprised by it from this like little goofy mobile game that i like wasn't really expecting to like be that deep from a social aspect you know what i mean right and so like i'm just curious like how did you find out about ashes of creation because it seems like like what you're what you've been traditionally used to when it comes to mmos or like how you play mmos ashes doesn't seem to be in your wheelhouse you know so, yeah. so i'm yeah, just curious so, like how how that all came to be yeah so i would say um i really 
I think it might have been YouTube or like, I really don't remember the first place I saw Ashes, but it was very recently. Like I've only been following it probably five or six months at this point. I don't even think we're at, on six yet. So maybe like five okay. months. Um, And I think it was just like, I think it might've been like a narc video or something like that, that I saw it on. And I was like, oh, you know what it was? The lazy peon video. The newest um, one that he did, or was it the 2021? uh because he did come on with the more I, the, recent video yeah i think it was the more recent one i'm gonna go okay. with that but either way i saw that and i was like oh this game like looks really interesting and then i found out about the wiki and like mm -hmm. i get super obsessed about like game mechanics and like all that stuff so i like read <laughs> through the details. whole wiki you know what i mean yeah just like all that um and yeah i'm super into it like i would say uh like ashes of creation in a lot of ways like reminds me maybe not reminds me, but like gives me vanilla World of Warcraft vibes. Like I, I quit WoW like pretty early, right? Cause when I was, I started in middle school and then got into high school and just got into other things. Like, you know, sort of like the natural right. progression away from it or whatever. But right. my favorite thing on World of Warcraft was just raiding, like PVP raiding. Like it took me so long to reach max level cap. Cause I was just running around trying to like raid astronaut and like i was at Taran mill and south shore just like <laughs> pvping and like yeah i had all these different battleground twinks and all that so like i don't know there's like like i said that was some of the best gaming i've ever gamed and it kind of gives me that vibe so hopefully hopefully it'll be like that well i think back in the day there wasn't a set program right so now we're mm -hmm. so end game focused right so it's all about raiding uh mm -hmm. but back then like people were doing like the battleground twinks and and making the mm -hmm. entire leveling progression their game and yeah. it didn't matter what you were doing yeah you were leveling you were doing dungeons you're doing this but there wasn't this huge focus on mm -hmm. oh i got a level to get to end game i gotta get to to do rating right. and do all my stuff right. like, it wasn't no one was really pressuring you to to get there like mm -hmm. everybody was just having fun getting there you know yeah almost like definitely. unknowingly um but so to go into like ashes just a little bit um okay so what was it specifically about the project that said yes this is a game that not only am i going to wait for but i'm also going to start making content about i mean just looking at your youtube channel your very first video was actually your most successful one which was the geo strategy and yeah. ashes of creation so mm -hmm. i'm just curious like you know how that all came about so i had been once I found out about the game, I started watching a bunch of content about it. Narc, like whoever I could find on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, I enjoyed all that content. I think Narc is a pretty entertaining dude uh, for what it's worth. And like, you know, but the, all the content I had watched, like didn't really dive into like the game mechanics the way that I had kind of wanted. And I was right. like, let me just throw something out there that like I would want to see. Right. And so that's just kind of how it got started. <laughs> and then, you right. know, now we're here. So, right. Okay, so right now, like, I, I know for me, like, I've been looking at Ashes way more realistically than a lot of other content creators. I think, right, right, you know, right. there there is the whole copia meme that's in the Ashes community mm -hmm. because yeah, of NARC. Um, but I know for me, like, you know, I, I look to see at how ambitious their project is, like, as far as mm -hmm. Ashes of Creation. And, you know, realistically, like, everybody's been wanting Alpha 2, you know, last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right, you right. know, I think right now people are saying summer you know of this year uh i personally think maybe first or second quarter of next year um mm -hmm. now with everything that you've gotten into since you're actually here most recently right like you haven't been in the action right. community for too long like how mm -hmm. do you feel like um with the pacing of of the game and like how intrepid's been towards its community i'm just curious from like a news a new person's perspective um i mean i would say like from the live streams that i've seen uh which have you know like four or five or something like that that i was able to actually catch when they were relevant um it's been pretty good like i think open development is tough uh i think it's tough to just make a good game in, in any genre right like it's, right. it's extremely difficult uh and i think that for the most part um they have been handling themselves well i don't necessarily love um you know all the things they do but that's just kind of with anything right, right <laughs> and so for sure uh you know i i kind of wish like because the thing for me like the in the grand scheme of it the way i'm seeing it is like all these little systems like the stock market caravans you know uh whatever else just like all these things like they kind of exist on top of the part of the game that i'm like most interested in right so i, I think that like 
uh once we get more into like the classes and the augments um and like the adventuring classes and all that stuff once we get more details on that i think it'll be a clearer i think people want to like see the the end of the journey sort of or like the light at the end of the tunnel if i'm if i'm making sense you know what i mean and like mm -hmm. without that information it can kind of be hard to uh to see that so i think like two parts like i want to know more about that and that's where any frustrations that i have come from but right. also uh you know open development stuff because you're, you're putting everything out there for everyone to see and criticize and you know everyone's a critic right <laughs> and um but other than that i think they've i think they've handled it well honestly okay and so for you specifically i want to get into like a little bit more of the broader sense because this will answer ash's related questions as well but just mm -hmm. in the broader sense of an mmo like what is it that you look for specifically when choosing an mmo like what's what makes what when you do play an MMO, what makes you stick around that MMO? Is it the um, the character customization? Is it the immersion of the world? Is it the storytelling? Like, what is it for you? So I would say that um, I think that like low key, it's the RP elements. Like now, I'm not a huge like role player. RP -er, right? Like I'm right. not a huge role player, but like the idea of like a community of people, uh, you know, all in this one world that is like generating its own story just by everyone taking their own like various actions is very um appealing you know what i mean and i think that at least the way that it's been pitched so far that ashes of creation is like really going to foster that i think the node system is like a pretty brilliant system at least on paper obviously we'll see how it turns out right um but you know it, there, it's like a real opportunity to like like conquest the world like you know what i mean like i think in, in a lot of mmos you know theme park mmos or whatever um there's sort of like a path for you like you know you're gonna level up then you're gonna get with the guild and then you're gonna do some raids and like whatever but there's not there's not a lot of mmos that like actually have player driven um content that like sort of forces people into interacting and like playing different roles right and i think that ashes of creation is is a game that's setting itself up for that in a very interesting way and then on you know to answer the initial question uh that's kind of what i look for like that's why i was so into like i was saying like pvp rating and everything like when i was on my wow server back in the day like people kind of knew me as the dude who like didn't level up and just wanted to raid and like all that you know what i mean so like right i think it was cool and like that stuff was epic you know like getting 40 people together and like riding through all of azeroth to get to iron forge and you know what i mean like kill some npcs and cause some havoc was like extremely epic and i think that you know the node system and everything that's going on in ashes is going to like really lend itself to that like sort of player driven story building and telling um that i think you know will make a lot of good memories for people and so uh that i think the pvp like if you were on a pvp server in, in class i was yeah um there were so many iconic moments because of pvp um, mm -hmm. The whole Terran Mill and South Shore, just natural battleground that happened between that area mm -hmm. in, the, in the 20s and 30s, uh, right. for me was iconic. I didn't even know I was on a PvP server. The funny, I was such a noob back mm -hmm. then that I thought every server was a PvP server, or I thought everybody experienced PvP because I didn't even know that there were PvE servers. <laughs> I didn't know right. that until way later, and I was right, like, okay, right. I'm gonna get off of a PvP <laughs> server so I can get on this one. <laughs> but um, so. You, with you with such a heavy pvp background and of course ashes mm -hmm. being very pvp centric that's not a feature that's going to bother you right no definitely not and i think that like i think in general like a lot of people that think they might be bothered by the pvp um will find that it's not uh as cumbersome as they think it's going to be that that's just my take we'll see how that actually pans out but for me personally no, i'm into pvp for sure right i actually <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think actually it's going to be worse for the PVPers. And me, really? Yes. Okay. And the reason why is because I think they're going to go a little heavy handed with the, you know, green, purple and red system, you know, the whole corruption right. system. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are going to choose to be green um, mm -hmm. and you're going to have people that are going to be purple. Right. So mm -hmm. if you're purple and you're killing other purple players, that's great. But if there's not enough purple players to kill, and you see right. a green person running around it's going to be that choice to kill that person then you become corrupted but de there's depending on a lot of variables you could be mm -hmm. slightly corrupted you could be mid corrupted or very heavily corrupted and then mm -hmm. it also depends too on how many times you can kill a person over and over again or different people over and over again 
like and when is the point of corruption too much to where right. you're completely ineffective and i really think with all of these additive things it's going to make pvpers upset because yeah. they feel like this game isn't a pvp game i'm trying to pvp but i keep getting penalty after penalty after penalty but here's my counter is that mm -hmm. in every other mmo like do you have like you know queuable battlegrounds that you can queue into queuable arena duels right. outside like in the in the open world and that's about it there's mm -hmm. there's really nothing else like you know everything else in in like wow is open world um mm -hmm. but in ashes of creation you have naval you have the caravan system you have of course uh battlegrounds that are going to spontaneously spawn in certain areas um uh, you have guild uh guild wars you have castle and node sieges like you have plenty of opportunities to kill people with no penalty whatsoever right. and mm -hmm. but i think there is a novelty for open world pvp but let's just be honest i think that novelty is kind of played out like mm -hmm. i don't really see a like if people are out in the open world and they don't want to pvp and they're green it should be a pretty heavy cost to kill that person like you right. shouldn't want to kill a, a, a green person uh just for the funsy part of it because there's all mm -hmm. these other opportunities for you to pvp with absolutely no penalty at all towards you yeah. or the other person so definitely i i think that's where i i really want i guess the pvpers to understand and again we, this is all testing too like we got to see well how many times is, is a dynamic battleground going to spawn in the open worlds are they going to be mm -hmm. uh how fast can we travel to them like how big are they be how long are they going to be like what objectives right. are going to be there uh how can i initiate a guild war uh between our guild versus another guild how easy is it is it hard is it on a timer can we only initiate one guild war at a time like there's so many things that we actually have to go out and test once alpha right. 2 starts but i will say that i think i can probably safely say that the pvpers will be safe however i still think they'll they'll complain 100 percent. yeah <laughs> I, I yeah i can see that like i think the idea is and you know i'm not intrepid so obviously you don't quote me on this but i it seems like they're trying to design a lot of game aspects and elements that are like there's just going to be better things to do than grief someone right <laughs> like it, right. it seems like you know if there's caravans running around and you're trying to get a little you know node building you need a smithy to, to start popping off you not you got to rob this caravan and take them out so you can get some steel and bring it back to your node and like it seems like there's going to be stuff to do like and that that stuff to do is going to include meaningful pvp that can shape the world around you which is good and interesting right um and i think that ideally uh ashes of creation are going to provide enough avenues for good and meaningful pvp that griefing is going to seem like a you know I don't want to say a waste of your time because it's obviously still going to happen and some people are just going to enjoy doing it to a certain extent but like i think that you know like i said there's just going to be a to-do list like oh we we're trying to you know get the node together or like level up the guild or level up the character you know what i mean just right I think there's just going to be other stuff to do that'll include pvp and that that hopefully will satiate people from you know just bothering others right and and i do think like i said ashes will do that because just looking at alpha one and how amazing the ca castle and node sieges are going to be Mm -hmm. there's not going to be a shortage in, in pvp um but right. i think the innate feeling of logging in and just the temptation of seeing a green player and you're like i mm -hmm. want to bite that kid's head off or whatever right, it's going to be right. really high for people but again mm -hmm. that's where the risk reward comes in if you want to kill that mm -hmm. person you can but there's mm -hmm. a punishment to it and i'm really glad there is a punishment because so many mmos that don't have punishments that's where real griefing begins yeah. and a lot of players end their mmo career because who mm -hmm. likes being grief? Like you're, if you only have so much time to play and someone's just killing you over and over because it's fun for them, you're either just going to log out, play a different game, or probably not even come back to that game at all. Like that, right. that person may have just ruined that person's experience. But I guess moving on, the one thing I do want to talk about is leveling. Um, now mm -hmm. I, the reason why I'm talking about leveling is because, you know, if someone from Intrepid is listening, which I hope someone is, but even if they're not, like, <laughs> I just want to talk about leveling in general, because, okay. you know, alpha two, you know, when it comes out, that's one of the first things that we're going to test probably mm -hmm. is the leveling experience. Whenever people were in alpha one, people were leveling their characters. Now mm -hmm. I just want to ask you in a broad sense, what okay. about leveling makes it fun for you? uh seeing the number go up just kind of basically <laughs> honestly like I, I feel like 
I'm a big grinder. Like I really like just like sitting down and like just grinding something out. It really doesn't even matter what it is, honestly. Like I just I just kind of love that process of just like optimization, like improvement, just like being the best I can be somehow. Like you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. uh and leveling is like something I can just fully bite into that is like exactly that. Um <laughs> so for me just I don't know, I would say just just seeing the number go up uh and how quick I can do it. It's kind of like a, a crude take, but yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm into. Okay. So, so let, let me kind of break it down then, uh, because mm -hmm. so player power is very important to you as you're leveling. But right. when, when I say leveling, like, like, is it, do you want a more like railroaded questing experience? Do you want it to feel uh, like, do you want, um, a quest to be like kill seven boars in this forest or, or like, mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of different questing do you like? Do you like escort quests, kill count quests, pick up quests, yeah. you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know that I've like ever really given that much thought to be honest. Like it was all just kind of like milestones, like steps along the way right. to the, to the final goal. I would say that like, I'll tell you what, like, I think, like, quests where you're just killing stuff are, like, pretty monotonous, probably. Like, it's it's very hard for me to feel one way or another about it, because I remember, you know, playing WoW, it was, like, at certain points, there weren't that many quests available, so you were just going right. to go kill stuff, and, like, you had your own quest of just right. killing mobs over and over. Uh, so right. I think that, like, um, those I'm, like, kind of here nor there about. I think escort quests thinking back on all the escort quests i ever had to do in any game like monster hunter nino kuni warcraft like i never really was in love with just the like the walkthrough kind of style of quests of just like just go from here to here and like you're kind of just waiting like the game's just taking you at their pace rather than you playing the game at your pace so i'm not i'm not totally in love with that right um yeah i don't know i like yeah okay well only reason why i was asking is because i feel like that's the one thing i would really want intrepid to really nail is because mm -hmm. that's the first presentation of ashes of creation to people like once right. you once you log in the questing experience starts immediately like what is it like what are you going to start doing in this game that's different from others like how dynamic right. is the questing going to be and i think that's a very important question to ask because there's a lot of games that railroad you into like okay quest a then quest b then quest b quest c, uh, quest c you know all this sort of stuff mm -hmm. and i feel like if there's more variety you know the better but also there because this is sort of like a sand park right so it's like a theme right. park sandbox kind of game mm -hmm. um a lot of sand park uh elements or sandbox elements are kind of grindy now you say yeah. you don't mind the grind and I know yeah. there's games like BDO where you definitely have to grind in that game when it comes mm -hmm. to like cranking out your levels. And then we also know in Ashes that there is going to be a leveling time of probably around circa 45 days if you're questing from, you know, 46 hours a day. Um, mm -hmm. That's a long time. Like I know for me, I'm actually been, I've been questing in uh, World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King on Classic recently. And I have mm -hmm. been casually doing this. Now, I say casually because I'm literally, this is me. I'm not looking right. at any guide or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I've been uh, playing eight hours a day from eight in the morning till five o'clock. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes I have to work because I am working during that time. Right. But right. I mean, I, I am playing anywhere between six to eight hours, maybe right. let's say five and a half to eight hours a day. Um, mm -hmm. I've leveled from one to 62 in five and a half weeks. Yeah. Okay. So, and I still, I'm, I have to hit level 80, you know, for max level. Mm -hmm. Now, my first question to you is how long should the leveling experience be or how short should it be hmm. for you so, specifically? For me specifically, I would say, I don't, I don't really mind one way or another. I don't think it should take like forever, but like 45 days seems like an all right pace. You know what I mean? I think in in broader terms of the game like that that period when everyone's level one to people start hitting max level is super important uh at least the way i understand it and understand the node system i think it's going to be a very influential time it's going to be like a critical piece of like you know the story of each server um so in that period taking a good amount of time uh is good i think because you know there's going to be like the day oneers right 
Uh, and then there's going to be like the weak tours. And I think that like you don't want the weak tours walking into uh, a server where the day oneers are already like, you know, on to bigger and better things that aren't leveling. And so like 45 days, like sounds like a good, you know, uh, good arc for the leveling curve. Right. Like I, I always kind of envisioned um, sort of a middle ground, but mm -hmm. it's kind of hard because I hate when games are designed uh, for you to hit max level in a single session. Like you, you get on right. like Lost Ark, you can go from one to 50 uh, or one to 60. I can't remember what the max level was in that game uh, within a single play session. Like you can do it within a day. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, right. And I don't like that. Like, because mm -hmm. you've, you've already set up your patch cadence for failure because if people are hitting, you know, end game day one, right? getting maxed mm. out end game level gear day one they're going to be finished probably within a week maybe a week and a half two weeks and then mm. they're going to be crying for when the next content patch when are we getting the next right. raid and i've always thought if it takes anywhere from one, one and a half to three months so you have one and a half months to like the hardcore playing 12 15, 16 hours a day you know right. leveling and then get done in about a month and a half compared to the other people that it's going to take double the time, like three whole months, mm -hmm. you can probably come out with a patch three months, four months out. And mm -hmm. it still feels good because if you're not adding, like, let's say a new raid, like we're used to or whatever, you can add mm -hmm. intermediate content. That's like, Oh, it could actually help out the people that are still leveling or just other events that are going on to make the game more interesting and everything like that. And it feels like a actual proper cadence of content because people are out still doing stuff, right? People right. aren't at the finish line just waiting for there to be another race. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People are still running their marathon. And I think that's very important because a lot of games I just feel just like miss that mark. Like World of Warcraft being one of them. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I agree. That's kind of, I think you honestly more eloquently said what I was trying to and just to like, you kind of want people to be doing things for a while. Like you don't want everyone to just end up at the end point, end game. Um, and not have like you know waves of players like doing different levels of content at you know different times like i, I think it's really important that like you know the, the day oneers are at one point and the day tours are at another point you know what I mean? yeah. it's just like you need, you need a mix of people and different play styles and you know availability to like really have like a living breathing uh mmo right so i, I agree with you 100 percent on that and like i don't know i don't know that i've i think for the most part i've played mmos when they were like newer like or you know had just coming out or just come out mm -hmm. so i was never really like outside of that phase mm -hmm. um in any of the mmos i played so that okay. was good you know what i mean but i just think that's like a happenstance thing so I, I wouldn't be able to speak on mmos that i thought missed that mark just because i don't think i uh played one for long enough for it to like for me to have really seen that or like felt the effects of that but it definitely sounds sounds uh seems like a valid concern i would say right and um, I just want to talk about um, character customization because that's another huge part that a lot mm -hmm. of people want to see in Ashes of Creation. But more broadly, like what MMO or what game have you played where you felt that your customization towards your character was like it felt really good? Like, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it, it had, you know, a nice mix of abilities or you can, you know, different talent choices or maybe mix and matching. Maybe two systems complemented each other because of how it worked for... Uh, player environment versus you know end game bosses or pvp like i'm just curious like where your thoughts sit on that yeah i mean i guess it's like for me the customization is like kind of two things because obviously there's like the uh the um, what's the word the cosmetic element to it right where like you want to be able to look however you want to look right um and then go from there and i think that like for the most part i'm not i'm not really like big on cosmetics myself so like when there's limited options, it doesn't like weigh on me too heavily. Um, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, I would say like when I played Skyrim back in the day, I felt like I was able to, you know, make a character that I wanted to as compared to like the Nino Kuni game I was telling you about, you couldn't customize your character like really too much at all. <laughs> and so like, again, that didn't really affect me. And then there's also like the talents and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think of a really good example, but I don't know, even in RPGs I've played or like, you know, classic WoW, vanilla WoW, whatever, like I kind of always felt like I was able to do do my own thing, like build a, a talent tree that I was, you know, 
happy with or like a build and spec into whatever it is i wanted to spec into interesting options like i feel like uh it's not really an mmo but borderlands had a good talent tree as well like just as an example mm -hmm. for people to relate to yeah i feel like you know borderlands, borderlands one or two uh both actually i played okay. through both of them um yeah i felt like those builds were pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know i'm kind of into talent trees like as long as there's something that like as long as i can theory craft on a build and just put it together like i think i'm in a good spot as long as there's cool options do you think there's a fine balance between simplistic and complex like go like something simplistic new world i don't know if you played new world but they're the way they do their talent design is very simplistic compared to like path of exile that their talent design is this labyrinth of talent points that is completely and utterly overwhelming for most people like do you right. think because I, I feel like playing dragonflight they've up mm. revamped um the wow talent trees or the class talent trees to two separate talent trees so you have the class talent tree and the spec talent tree so if you're a druid okay. you have your druid talent tree but then you have your guardian or your uh restoration or your right. uh, um you know feral or whatever the case was and i think that balance of having two separate talent trees and each point mattering um mm -hmm. makes the talent choice very well the one thing that I've seen from a lot of games that do talent systems and it's multiplicative where mm -hmm. not only do you have um, this talent uh, system that you have to worry about, but then you have this other additive power system that adds more degrees of power. And then there's this other talent system that adds another degree of power. And then you have this other talent system that has right. another degree of power. And I feel like it, Lost Ark is a good example of all these multiplicative things. Mm -hmm. And because of that multiplicative power, it dilutes everything so right. nothing seems interesting nothing seems engaging and nothing seems fun because they have no choice but to do one like half a point of crit uh to this right. thing or um you know a double slash and uh 50 chance like it, everything just feels really like okay i guess like because mm -hmm. you have all of these additive power systems but when you have one central power system and that's it there's nothing else then mm -hmm. I think you can have way more interesting choices because your options are limited. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I would say like, I think there's a couple important things. Uh, your options being limited is actually one of them. So just to touch on your like last mm -hmm. sentence there, I think that it's important that you're making a choice uh, when it comes to like builds and games, right? Because if you sometimes in games, they have these talent trees and like you just spec enough into one thing and you can, you just end up being able to do everything. And that's not like interesting or fun, I think, like mechanically, because you're not really, you're not investing yourself into something uh, that is differentiating you from the next unit, right? Uh, so I think options being limited uh, to an extent is good. And then I think the other thing is like accessibility in games is like, you know, it's a it's a different topic depending on who you're talking to. But I think overall, it's it's a good thing. I think that's probably the the common sentiment. But uh, to elaborate on that, I think it's you know accessibility from a talent tree standpoint to me is like are the synergies obvious right right uh, and that's not to say that i don't want you know builds that can be like a little trickier like you know you can express like creativity or that you can't express creativity and uh subtlety within your build but it, it should be a situation where like oh i want this talent because it ups my crit and then i want this talent because when i critical hit i do more damage you know that's sort of like the basic example right. but when the synergies are obvious and the builds are um you know there's there's clear paths you can go down i feel like it's it's more interesting right. and you get people going down more different paths because you know they want to do whatever it is that they want to do so i think it's pretty important that um you keep those things in mind with talent trees and i would say that oh, okay. the best games i've played with talent trees have like sort of stuck to that uh you know formula okay and uh, just to change it up a little bit, because I, I did watch this video that you made, which is how and why to Zerg and Ashes of Creation. Uh, <laughs> now, th that was a huge, I remember being uh, a part of, you know, way back when, when I joined, which was like in 2021, 2020. Mm -hmm. And Zerging has always been this topic in Ashes. But in general, I think in most MMOs, Arc Age, EverQuest, Lineage, um, mm -hmm. any, or any uh, MMO that has a world boss. Now, there's some MMOs where you know, you're in a PVE server and you can just all Zerg a world boss and then no one, there's no PVP, so you don't yeah. have to worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. But there's always this sense of lag. There's always this sense of 
um, just outside circumstances that can still make the experience seem very just dull, I guess would be right. the, the correct word or term. Now, the way I've seen the back end or the networking of Ashes, and I mean, like, I saw over 120 people um, or 120 people versus 120 people in, in A1 and mm -hmm. nothing was lagging in a sense. Like, I, I can do a 40 versus 40 in World of Warcraft and there is lag everywhere. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, 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 mm. it's, it's garbage. And so I think the lag problem is probably not going to be there for Ashes. Cross the fingers. Let's hope. Um, right. But I'm just curious about the whole Zerg game mentality, especially in a game where PvP is not toggleable. You can't just shut it off. Like, stuff is mm -hmm. going to happen. Like, why are you... Uh, why would you advocate for people to Zerg? So I think that, like that that video in particular i think uh the purpose of it was kind of lost on people honestly because i got a lot of comments like oh but you know we shouldn't be zerging like that's like one of the things that you know steven talks about like we don't want people to zerg or whatever right. and like i get that and i think that that is a good thing to think about and, and a good idea to like put countermeasures in into the game against right? right but the bottom line is that the people are gonna do that right like i the point of that video was like if there's any mechanic that people can take advantage of that is like close to mass transit, right? They're going to do it because the, one of the easiest ways to do powerful things in a game is to get as close to breaking the rules as possible, right? And so, you know, when you talk about the family summon, which is kind of what that video is about, it's like if you can organize your family summons in a, in a you know, whatever way is possible, if you can optimize them, people are going to use that to move around the map. And like, I think it's going to look like this and like you should probably do it if you want to be at the top of your server doing it is doing whatever it is that you do right so like right. that was kind of the point of that video and like I, I know for one personally like if i'm on a server right and the top guild is they're doing all this different you know family summon shenanigans to like i don't know optimize their trade or their pvp or like whatever it is their pve routes i'm like all right how do we do that let's let's <laughs> let's make that happen you know what i mean because i'm trying to be at the top of my game right. too so like the point of that video was kind of to be like yeah, I think this is going to be a thing. Um, and it might look like this. It wasn't necessarily like, oh, we got a Zerg and like, we got to just like break the game in half. And like, I think, you know, we Zer Zerging is needed. It's a necessity. Nah, it's like, I think it's, I think Zerging might look like this, you know, Zerging <laughs> in Ashes Creation might look like this, given the tools that we have, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and I think that's the, I think that's the issue, right? With Ashes, right? Is there's, there's so many systems in this game that mm -hmm. we have literally not even we haven't even seen yet i mean and again mm -hmm. like we haven't been in alpha 2 yet um but just speaking on the family summoning system i don't know how i feel about that particular system and again mm -hmm. it's because we haven't tested it we haven't seen how it, it can practically play out but mm -hmm. we do live in a world in a very min max mmorpg yeah. world and 100%. if you don't think that guilds aren't going to make spreadsheets with your family summon your character your seven hundred percent and and do that for their group of a thousand guildies like you're you're, you're mistaken that's definitely 100 yeah, exactly. percent going to happen and <laughs> exactly. especially in organized guilds and so mm -hmm. i think we're in the position like where if you want to play with somebody like i think there's going to have to be very stringent parameters that you're going to have to kind of follow and mm -hmm. I, I think some certain people may not like that. Um, right. And I think we do live in a, in a world where every MMO teleportation is very much easy. It's a thing. It's, it's something you can do. But I think, um, you know, even like hearthing to an end, like, I don't know if they're going to have that or something to that effect. Right. Um, I think that would be better. Um, you know, so you, so basically you and your seven, uh, people, Mm -hmm. um instead of it's instead of summoning to you you and your people can summon to an inn like right. an inn of your choosing so mm -hmm. then you can basically orchestrate world bosses to where okay like you can't just like hey i'm here at the boss like let's all summon to me and then you can summon your summon and summon and you know the chain just basically starts <laughs> right like, you can't right. do that like i think i think there has to be kind of really fundamental changes to where it's like hey you're on the other continent i'm over here on the other continent we want to quest together uh well why don't we mm -hmm. like we both visited this inn let's let's both hearth there and then we basically mm -hmm. and that's our summon like we basically just go to the same point together 
And I right. think that would be a way better system than just summoning my family to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, being able to summon your family to yourself yes creates so many issues wild. like it's just like a very like that's a very powerful thing to be able to do and i'm yep. not saying you're all going to be able to snap your fingers and then just be wherever you want to be in the matter of moments because right. i think you know very clearly it, you know, like from what we know about it as of right now it's not supposed to work that way uh and it probably wouldn't work that way in alpha 2 release whatever it is um but regardless just being able to do that is going to be super powerful right like in a game where travel is so heavily limited that it's pretty obvious to me that being able to summon whoever wherever inside your family is going to be a thing that people are going to abuse right so that was kind of the point of that video but yeah i agree i think like um it might be changed at some point i, I think they're going to test it out in in its current iteration you know um and we'll see what happens from there i guess but you might be right it might it might take a might take a turn later on it, it may take a whole other different format of how the mm -hmm. summoning is going to be or it may just be scrapped they may just right. say hey we we don't like that idea either and we can't come up with this with this uh, like a good situation for it so we're just mm -hmm. going to remove it entirely and just see right. how that works like and mm -hmm. basically just go from there um we'll have to wait and see but the other thing i'm really worried about with world bosses is steven is not a fan of scalability or mm. um like world bosses scaling and mm -hmm. i'm really curious how that's gonna work because if a world boss is designed for 40 people mm -hmm. that also is not gonna happen either like in a yeah. sense like uh you're gonna have a guild that has like a thousand people like probably in it or uh constructed on a discord right so their whole guild mm -hmm. so even if the max guild size is like 250 or 199 or whatever they right. whatever they do which i think that's a whole other problem entirely i think the guild size limit should be way upped personally like who cares mm -hmm. like if it's 500 a thousand two thousand like it doesn't matter because they're still going to organize in discord people aren't right if you can't let them organize in game they will right. organize elsewhere mm -hmm. and so i'm just really curious how intrepid's going to handle the world boss situation because i really doubt like you're going to have to scale the boss's health because mm -hmm. you're gonna have 13 groups of 40 all yeah. hitting a world boss and then each other like that yeah. boss is just gonna melt in like two seconds you know what i mean if that's the case so i'm yeah. really curious like how do you think they should handle the world bosses do you think they should make an exception for world bosses to be scalable i think that they will probably end up scaling the world boss like i off the top of my head i don't have the solution right and i no, don't know sure. how they would handle that um when I, it comes yeah. to that but the idea that a, a 40 man you know world boss 40 person world boss whatever is only gonna be attacked by 40 people at any one time on these servers of ten thousand is just like not very good right like it's just mm -hmm. i don't think that's actually gonna play out that way so uh without scaling I, are we just killing world bosses like it's nothing like i think they're I think it's a bridge that they will eventually have to cross and the on the other side of it i just see scaling as of right now they could very well come up with a more innovative solution and i hope that they do you know what i mean but i think they'll probably end up scaling hp okay and you know um i saw narc's most recent video um uh, or not his most recent video but he was talking about the 64 class system now that's mm. also gotten a lot of mixed reviews like i i have mm. my own opinions about the 64 class system but was that a thing that you like about ashes of creation is this class system or is that something that gives you pause um i mean i don't i can't say i like it or that it gives me pause honestly not to dodge the question but just no because we don't really know what's going on like every every live stream i'm hoping we see the audience right like that's kind of what i'm into right now because i like i'm obsessed with like building a character and like right. how do i do the most elemental damage or like you know whatever it is so like right i want to see the augments and the way that's going to work um but we just really don't know anything about that right now and i think that any opinions on it are probably like more superficial than people would like to admit you know what i mean just because we don't have that information like it would be one thing if it was like yeah when you augment this class you get these skills and you know this and that and that but we just don't no right like we know there's going to be 64 classes quote unquote and that's kind of it right now and we've only seen what ranger uh tank cleric so far so we don't even know what all the eight base classes look like and we don't know what choosing a subclass looks like 
So having an opinion on it is just kind of like, I don't think we have enough information. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's very first. Take. Um, yeah. I think we should just wait that out and see. I think it's not really that big of a deal. Like as long as the augment system isn't like, you know, overblown in terms of complexity and the way it functions, I don't really see, like, it seems like the 64 classes is like kind of cosmetic, you know what I mean? Like it just like, there's going to be a bunch of names for a bunch of different, uh, you know, uh, main archetypes and sub archetypes. But I think the augment system is not something that, you know, they can't handle, honestly. Right. I, I mean, I, I'll, I've talked so much about the 64 <laughs> class system, so I won't say too much other than I think it is a big deal because if they're going, if they're going to solidify with their decision to make 64 classes, um, mm -hmm. I think the talent choices are going to be very generic because you yeah. went you went very wide with the mm -hmm. 64 class system that you can't go deep enough because as deep as people want to go you would have to invest so many man hours into this right. uh class system that i don't think intrepid's willing to do so what else can you do you're gonna have to make a lot of stuff very generic very plain mm -hmm. very boring um and i don't think that's gonna go over well with the community i think i i would have rather have had personally um 10 classes and actually have very rich and deep um talent choices and customization than 64. Mm -hmm. like i think that right. like looking at when i show someone a 64 class system they think wow they think oh my god you have one class in eight specs that's nuts like mm -hmm. that's that's not what you got <laughs> that's not right. what you got and it's, yeah it's gonna be very disappointing for people once they do unveil this class system unless they make some changes to it so yeah maybe i yeah it could go that way i think that i don't know <laughs> it's just it's just hard yeah for we don't know I, yeah i think the augment system like could be cool and I, I actually agree with you that it's gonna have to be like somewhat generic right like for example i think like a lot of the cleric augments are gonna be like and you get some health back like like you know you do your ability and you get some health back and like that's you know i'm sure that they'll it'll be a mixture of both. Like there's going to be some surprises like, oh, that's really cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. And then right. it's going to be some, and you get some health back kind of, kind of abilities. But yeah. as long as there's enough of them and they're, they're fluid enough in the way that you get to choose them. I think that that's more than okay, honestly, just cause like, right. You know, if, if your main class is, you know, really the main class and I don't know too much about the class system or what they've said about it, uh, particularly, but I don't know, as long as there's, yeah, like I said, as long as there's enough augments and you can, really kind of customize it the way you want to i think it's probably probably going to be all right no for sure i do want to talk about something that uh a buddy of mine were actually talking about too not too long ago and it's okay. about traveling um mm. now for me like i said playing world of warcraft classic you do a mm. lot of freaking traveling especially yes. whenever you're around the level 40 to 50 range because you're going from east and western plague lands to uh winter spring to fellwood mm -hmm. to like you're just going everywhere um mm -hmm. because there's so much there's very limited quests you can right. do and because you need so much xp you're mm -hmm. either like having to travel all these different uh distances just to turn in one quest and then do another quest and then you have to go back to somewhere else to do more quests and it's for me like i find it very annoying i find mm -hmm. because the traveling at least in wow at this point in time and it also could be very flawed in my my thought process because i've played wow for so long and wow is an old right. game mm -hmm. but just going from flight point to flight point and then get on the zeppelin go to the other side right. go to another flight point mount head to my quest that whole mm -hmm. process is just it's boring and mm -hmm. we know ashes of creation is going to be a huge huge game so i'm just i'm just asking you this question Mm -hmm. What can they do to make traveling interesting? Uh, make the world interesting is the very first thing that comes to mind, right? Like make the world a very dynamic and rich place to see. Um, and I think that we kind of get the sense that they're trying to do that with all the things that they've showed us about how they're using Unreal Engine to create uh, different structures and environments and everything like that in the world. So I think that's like, just make the scenery good is like the very like elementary answer but it's an important one i think and then also um you know from what i understand about the node system it seems like 
you might be able to do a fair bit of leveling in the same place because essentially you're leveling the environment around you as well. I, I don't know how that's going to actually end up playing out and how much traveling you're going to need to do in terms of like, oh, I need to go over here because that's where the, the bigger, better monsters are and I got to kill them for the bigger, better experience. Right. Um, I don't really know how that how that's going to work. But uh, yeah, I would say the base answer is just make the world make the world really interesting. So, I mean, by making the world interesting, like, I I kind of take that a little bit in different areas. So, how mm -hmm. you can make that interesting is making very dynamic, making a lot of different dynamic events on your way to the next quest. Right. So, oh, wow, something happened where I can actually help this thing and actually get experience out of it or some kind of a, a reward mm -hmm. from it that's actually worthwhile. Um, another way that I was thinking about, too, is mounting. Like, mm -hmm. I, Guild Wars 2 has probably one of the best mount systems in the MMO genre. And mm. what makes it very interesting is its dynamic button-to-button -button gameplay that certain mounts have. So you have like mm. the Sonic the Hedgehog mount that goes really fast in a single mm -hmm. direction, but it's really hard to turn, you know, because it oh, goes very fast. And okay. then uh, you have like the kind of gliding mount where you can like swoop in and up and go down. And, and it's, it's not really a flying mount. You can't just endlessly fly in the sky but you can use certain um you know high points to then glide and, and making the mm. travel interesting more dynamic right. more like dragon flight you know you have your your dragon that you can leap into the sky and then you basically use the inertia to like glide and and mm. go to a certain area and i think that is like the future of traveling mm. in mmos because the more right. dynamic you can actually make button pushing because what am i doing in classic I auto run my mount and it just goes right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not doing anything. It, it's literally right. just doing itself. And so because it's like that, it's, it's very not fun. It's just boring. Mm -hmm. But when you have dynamic travel and you're actually engaging with your mount, whether that's like, think of like adding Gran Turismo in MMOs and yeah, your yeah. car is your mount and mm -hmm. you can drift, you can add additional speed. You can double jump. You can, you know, drift turns and you, you basically make the mount gameplay interesting enough to where you almost want to finish your quest. So you can get back to your mount gameplay, right? Like you're not just holding W yeah. right. And I, and I think that's where I would love intrepid to really showcase, because I think if you were to make like all the different animal types, all the different mount types, and mm -hmm. you think of like 22 different mount abilities, and with the animal husbandry system, you can mi mix and match certain ability types with other ability types because you can get a horse and you can get a wolf and breed them. And then now you have these six ability types of the mount and this six ability types of the other mount and then mix them together right? instead of making like a pure breed horse or a pure breed wolf. And mm. then you can start really making mounts really interesting depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do. And I think that's where I kind of hope and see the future of not only uh, traveling uh, in MMOs, but more specifically, of course, Ashes of Creation. So I'm just really mm -hmm. curious as to what you think about that. I think it's a really good idea. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that would be a really good way to expand on the animal husbandry system as well. Honestly, I don't, I'm kind of just in agreement. That's like, it all sounds good to me. Holding W is not exactly the most uh, invigorating experience. And yeah, I think that mounts having abilities or like, maybe granting you special stats based on their like uh, genetic makeup or stuff like that, like could be really cool. Um, and I would say in addition, yeah, that would. Yeah, because that would be I, cool. I want mounts to feel like the player character. I want mm -hmm. the mounts to have a talent tree. I want, you, right. I want you to be able to pick which abilities you want to select, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, how you want your mount customization speed options to be um, terrain options like as, mm -hmm. as customers, uh, cause he talks about customization when it comes to caravans. I want right. that same customization with my mount, you know, because right. I think mounts are so underutilized in MMOs that mm -hmm. we should really start thinking of them like a racing car, you know what I mean? Right. And, and start adding like add-ons and, and different cool bolt-ons that we can add to it, uh, to make, to make the mount gameplay actually fun and engaging and just worth doing, you know, you mm -hmm. have in Guild Wars two, these dragon races. Uh, and even in World of yeah. Warcraft Dragonfly, you have these dragon races because, uh, and even these player created ones where you have mm -hmm. a YouTube channel. It's like, hey, try to try to mimic this, uh, you know, um, 
glide gameplay or glide race that I created or whatever. And I think all of that stuff is really fun and engaging. And I think if Intrepid right. can follow that suit, I think it really doesn't matter how big or how big the world is because people want to travel because it's fun to travel. It's right. fun to be on your mount. And it's actually fun to level your mount because you know, oh my God, when I get my mount to level 30, I can get that double yep. jump or I can mm -hmm. get that that one minute cooldown to burst to 300% speed for 12 seconds. Like they, right. they want these fun and engaging ways to, 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 to play with their mount. And I think mm -hmm. Intrepid should give it to them. So I really hope that that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I think like, you know, it's really like a lot of, you know, the phrase that you just said, uh, player created, right? Like, yes, that's kind of the thing for me, like about MMOs that I'm, that I'm into, like give people a set of tools, parameters, you know what I mean? Abilities, whatever it is, and just like, let them do what they're going to do. And I think that, you know, giving people those types of tools when it comes to mounts as well is definitely underexplored. Um, and like st stuff like races and, you know, maybe mounted combat or something like that could be really interesting. So hopefully they, they can add some features like that, honestly. Well, we're almost towards the end of our conversation, but I wanted to leave the last thing as to something maybe you wanted to talk about, maybe something that's been on your mind about Ashes of Creation or just MMOs in general. Is there anything that you want to end off with or talk about? Um, man, I maybe. I think I'm better at answering questions than <laughs> <laughs> coming up with stuff to talk about. But uh, I don't know, man. I feel like um, I feel like it's pretty easy to like be down on games in general, uh, you know, think like a lot of people are very frustrated with the gaming industry mmos specifically stuff like that i don't know like i i would say that i'm not immune to those frustrations either i think that like it seems like there's a lot of options today like there's definitely more games than there's ever been but like how right. many of those games are you like how actually many of playing? actually options yeah like how yeah. many people are actually playing those games uh but yeah i don't know just like I don't know, there's stuff on the horizon right ashes throne and liberty uh those are really kind of the main two i'm checking for right now but like you know just keep your head up and like try and you know think good thoughts i guess <laughs> like <laughs> dude well, i just feel like uh you know it's like it's easy to uh be pessimistic and uh you know maybe maybe just give things a shot see what they're like and wait for the information and I don't know kind of just something i was like because i was having this chat with my boys recently like the gaming industry and like our frustrations and like ultimately like i don't know there's more games coming and i think it's i think it'll be a good time i think you know games like the day before and quint mm -hmm. ball these mm -hmm. projects that you know are trying to get traction and these all these eyes are on these projects um give that frustration and that that pessimistic attitude more towards the players because mm -hmm. those are clearly scams they're scam mm -hmm. games right. and that's why people are so pessimistic people are so jaded because you have these projects that are like hey it's gonna come out it's gonna come out and mm -hmm. it never came out you know games like chronicles mm -hmm. of valyria you know that right. literally launched right when ashes launched which is why mm -hmm. ashes was also seen as a scam because mm -hmm. chronicles of Valyria was a scam and yeah. it, it's it's just very disappointing and it and it literally makes us feel so deflated as a gaming community it's mm -hmm. hard to find optimism into any other project um or just give credence and validity to any like indie studio that's trying to actually do something real because all right. these fake things are just surrounding everything so yeah, i think that's true. what really gives um so that's what makes it hard for people like us in the gaming community to have a more optimistic view and mm -hmm. you know to add to your point uh earlier when you were talking about um you know intrepid's open you know discussion and just it's open forum to discuss their you know um how they're creating ashes of creation giving us monthly updates and stuff like that it's a very mm -hmm. hard thing to do and it is a very, yeah. it is a double-edged sword uh because you know people want this game now because the landscape of gaming right now just isn't right what people want you know what i mean people yeah. want more and even hogwarts Hogwarts, great game, right? People are playing the heck out of it. And now people mm -hmm. are already asking, okay, what's the next thing? I already beat Hogwarts. Yeah. What do I do now? It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really sad. Games are, uh, I use the term, uh, phrase fly by night. I'm always saying that to my boys. Like, <laughs> games are super fly by night these days. But yeah, I mean, like games like True. come and go a lot faster um, 
than they used to right uh because it took a lot i mean i don't know how i don't know i don't know how long it takes to develop games and how that's changed over time but i right. feel as if uh for sure that games come and go a, a lot a lot quicker and um interestingly enough like sort of the same mmos that have been on top have been on top for a long time so like maybe we're immune to that part of the gaming industry but at the same time like the monotony kind of sets in right um and people just want like something fresh and new and i think ashes of creation is a game that is appealing to uh not only people's nostalgia but just like just things you know that they want like they want a game that's not doesn't include any pay to win they want a game with open world pvp or so they think <laughs> you know they, they they want a game with all these different things that they're mentioning and uh, i mean it's being worked on right like we're getting the monthly updates and like everything so you might as well keep your chin up and just like see what's going on you know what i mean just like like i said just wait for the info and then once you have the info like formulate your opinion from there maybe it's for you maybe it's not but you know just give it some time and you know things can happen yep i will have to say that is definitely <laughs> uh ac from strategic creation ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for coming on and and talking with me and having this awesome discussion and uh where can people find you ac like um i'm gonna link of course your youtube channel do you have twitter or anything any other social yeah so i'm i'm on twitter um at aiden cash i'm on youtube at aiden cash and then also youtube uh strategic creation okay. um and I, yeah i will definitely have all of those in the links below so if you want to follow and check out his content go do that now and of course my name is uh vladis well before i even say that i just want to say if you like this video hey hit that like button it helps out yes hit push the out like to button. more mmo pill people uh into the for algorithm sure. subscribe to the channel for more 1v1 uh takes and interviews like this and yeah. again my name is vladis with vladis gaming that is ac with strategic creation and we will see you guys on the yep. next one thank Later, you guys. for having me man it was a pleasure yeah thank you so much man